Hi everyone, Jane Spencer here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys. So I'm stuck in quarantine. It's got me feeling quite nostalgic. I wanted to watch some old, old, old YouTube videos. And I kept thinking, who's my absolute favorite YouTuber? Me! <laughs> so I'm gonna travel back in time, going down memory lane and watch my very first ever YouTube hair tutorial because I've come so far and I wanna see how far I've come. All right, so first things first, I gotta type in YouTube. I feel like that's what they do in these videos. I don't know. I only watched like three of these before I did this. Here we go. YouTube. And let's search myself up. Okay. Oh, look at that. I'm the very first result. Then James Young. <laughs> Eat your heart out. There it is. Okay. How to style big drag queen wigs by James Mansfield. Wig styling tutorial. Four years ago. Oh my God. All right. Let's click it. Oh my goodness. Let's rock out. Ew! My makeup is horrible. <laughs> Why didn't you guys tell me? That's how I look like? I'm not doing this. Click here and watch episode four of Wig Wars. Oh, I watch episode. All right, let's rewind. Let's rewind. Let's see. Okay, let's. I, I missed that beginning. Oh my goodness, that wig looks awful. <laughs> I used to do intros like this. Why did I ever stop doing that? My God, that Apple Loops that was available in GarageBand <laughs> because they like, called Havana Nights or something. I use that thing out. I am wearing that <laughs> necklace that I wore for my audition when I did Rebel Wilson. I just had no other jewelry to wear, so I wore that in like 18 videos. All right, let's get past this intro. It's oh, it's it gets worse. Another tutorial. Today I'm going to bring you something. What is that hairline? I'm looking at that wig and I'm just like, okay, so those earrings are thrift store earrings that I got for $2 <laughs> at Value Village here in Milwaukee. And oh, that lipstick is terrible. Those eyebrows. Oh my God, I see my real eyebrows. <laughs> not even at all in this wig actually like this side is pretty good like that one with the curls and everything that's cute this uh this i don't know what's going on on that side and that hairline is suspect i think that was like an i'm style wig from amazon like way way back before they had like decent lace fronts and like the lace stopped right here so i had to like smash it down to make sure you didn't see my sideburns oh boy thankfully this is only eight minutes long I don't remember it being that short. I it quite often, and that's how I do my hair. Now, I'm going to show you okay. my technique I use on just about any basic wig you get from a run-of-the-mill wig shop. You're going to need a few things. What are we going to need? is a regular old dollar store brush. Doesn't matter. It's just for the brush out. That brush, I don't think I used it at all in this tutorial. <laughs> I think I showed it, but I just I showed it like that I'll have offhand, but I don't think I ever used it during this video. But let's see. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to it. What else do we need, James? But the most vital piece of equipment is a teasing comb. These bristles are very okay. important. It's going to pack in a lot of wig hair really quickly. It's amateurish, but yeah, it's pretty right. good. You're going to need what else two types of hairspray. I use one regular type of wet spray. Hold up. Garnier Fructis. I was using Garnier Fructis. Lo and behold, I actually think that was my boyfriend's sister's hairspray that I stole. I did not buy that hairspray on a whim. There's no way I bought something that expensive for myself. Okay, let's see. What else? What other kind of hairsprays do we need? This one is from Garnier Fructis. Got from Walgreens. Uh, these press-on nails, too. Those full-on, like, Walgreens red press-on nails. They were um, the Kiss versions before they discontinued them. And I was so cheap that I reuse them, reuse them, reuse them. And then when, like, they started to look real janky, I would just put them on a strip of, like, tape. And I'd paint over them with red nail polish. All right, what else? And a glue spray. This is the one I use. Okay, so that's pretty good. Got to be glue. I still use that. And you're going to need something to put the wig on. Some people could use the styrofoam heads. Don't. Okay. I personally use the canvas wig head. Invest in one. That thing is huge. I can't believe I actually use that. No wonder my wigs never fit me properly. That, that wig head is way too big. Okay. All right. So far, so good. Let's see what else we got. First, your wig. I just got a regular wig shop wig. It's pre-cut lace front wig. Costs about four. The Vivica Fox collection. Okay, four years ago. 
See, beauty shop wigs was all we had. We had like whatever crap was on Amazon, which wasn't great. And then we had beauty shop wigs. And this is a pre-cut lace front wig from the Vivica A. Fox collection, which was like the higher end lace front wigs you could get at a beauty shop at that time. And they weren't even that great either. Let's see what else we got going on. Most importantly, this is a wavy style. You're gonna get the best kind of styles depending on what the wig already looks like, but I'll go more into that later. In the meantime, stay tuned and I'll show you how okay. to get a beautiful hairstyle like this. All right, so there's no way you're gonna get that hairstyle without doing a different curl pattern. <laughs> That wig I'm wearing is one I actually curled. When I was talking about having a wavy style, that was me being lazy because I didn't feel like curling a wig on camera. I'd find a wig that had the closest curl pattern and I'd use that. But no, that Vivica A. Fox wig, you're not gonna have anything that looks anywhere similar. <laughs> that was a roller set that I did to that wig with hot rollers. Yeah, and it doesn't look great either because that was before I knew about steam setting. Okay, so first I start by prepping the wig. Oh my line. goodness making sure it's all straight. Always make sure that the front of the wig is facing the wig and everything like that. All right, that wig stand, the wig head, it's, that's not the front of it. That's the side that I'm putting it on. <laughs> you can tell because it curves inward and I had no idea what the front and back actually was. And I actually drew the face on the wrong side at first. So like there was a prettier face on the other side, but that was like the side of the head and not the actual front of the, not the front of the wig block. But I was so ashamed that I just drew a whole new face and it looks really janky and that's the one you're seeing on camera right now. Flop it right on top of the wig head. It's I no wonder my wigs never fit. Sewing straight pins and just pin it right into the lace. This is a hard no. lace wig from a wig shop. No, what cheap, are you doing? So Don't do that. As rough as you want with this, it's not really gonna make a difference. Don't put the you pins right through the lace. lace. You wanna be more cautious. Guys, take a section and spray it down with some of the wet hairspray and lightly pack it in with teasing brush. I go from the ear tabs all the way around the What am I the doing? The ear tab. Yeah. No, stop. Sure don't. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, don't do this ever. Okay, I I apologize right here and now for this information that I was doling out four years ago. I was learning on the job. Um, that whole wet hairspray with the teasing brush, you don't actually have to do that, especially don't do that in the front of the wig. Do it in the back of the wig if you're just gonna pack the hair down. But for the front of the wig, you actually wanna do it dry. And the way I'm lacing, oh my God. Just the way I was packing that hair down, it's all volume, like nothing at the roots and all right here. So when I start to brush it out, it ain't gonna be nothing there. The pinning, the pinning situation, no. If you have a lace front wig that's that short and the lace is that short, do not put the pins through the lace. James, what are you doing four years ago? My God. Yeah, if you have a lace front like that, you take your pins and you place it further back on the hairline or like all the way where the tracks start. And you just gotta hope to your life that you know nothing falls off. But no, it's tricky, but that's the way you avoid it so that you don't get obvious holes in your lace. Wish I still had this wig. I wanna look at its lace. I bet you there's gigantic holes all along the front of the hairline. The hair and you don't wanna pack down too hard. Otherwise, you just- We're only two minutes in and I'm already so ashamed. You wanna make sure you can still make a do out of this. You'll find that big hair conceals a lot of things, like facial scars, wonky eyelashes, choke marks from your jaw. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, not choke marks from your jaw. What the hell was I thinking in these voiceovers? <laughs> okay, so I was trying to fill time clearly, and I didn't think to cut the video. So I just said whatever the hell came to my mind. And oh my God, it's a good thing this was four years ago because of YouTube now, that would never fly. All right, let's see what else. By track, taking about two tracks at a time with each other. Yeah, that you teasing is not gonna hold. At a time, you wanna keep them smaller. As you see, I'm just keeping all the hair in there and making sure there's a nice little long tail that you can blend in with the rest of the hair later. Now, after you get done teeth, you could just keep it that way if you wanna look like Russell Brand. A Russell Brand reference, clearly a reference that'll be funny till the end of time. Remember when he was a thing? Oh my God. None of this teasing is going down to the roots, mind you. Like I'm putting a full cloud of tease in the middle of the track, like all the hair, like I pull it up and I was teasing it down, but it only ever got to like the middle of it. It never actually got down to the roots because I was not using that brush properly. And for what I was trying to do, I was using that narrow little brush. If you're trying to pack down that much hair, you need something a lot thicker. Like that paddle of that brush and the bristle should be a lot thicker and flatter. It becomes shorter and you don't get a lot of that length in it. 
So and why I are you using so much hairspray? It's going to be like straw by the time hair. you're done. So going in and out, connecting them all together, making sure they all fuse into one before I need to get the brush. <laughs> I'm listening to my voiceover and I can hear my shirt brushing against the microphone because I was using my air, my like headphones for my iPhone. Oh, the production value. It's good to see nothing's changed. When you have big hair, it distracts from a lot of things like your man hands, your nose, your Oh my god. This hair, like I said, is already a wavy pattern, so that is what it's going to end up as. Always pay attention to this when you're buying wigs. If they're wavy like this, or if they're shaggy or cut in layers, they're always going to rat out the best and give you the most volume. Right, now oh, see, that's right. See, I knew a little bit of what I was talking about. That's actually a pretty good point that I still stand by today. If you're going to shop for a wig, make sure you get something that's layered, like a shaggy layered style if you're buying from a beauty shop. Like the way a wig looks, like if it has a wavy pattern, when you tease it out, it's going to tease out in that wavy pattern. It's pretty simple. So yeah, I, that was right. You know what you're talking about. Oh my God, that bracelet. Whatever happened to that? I used to wear that in every video. I was trying to create like a theme, you know, like James Mansfield, she wears this bracelet all the time because it has some sentimental attachment. I think it was like the backstory is like it came from an ex-husband or something. What else we got going on? What is this outfit? That is a maiden form brassiere that I'm wearing and a polka dot pink shirt that was actually hand-me-downs from Dora Diamond from the last episode of Wig Wars. Be sure and check that out. This part, you get a little bit rough. You use your fingers to basically grab a hold of it and clutch it and then keep sliding the brush through to smooth it out. Okay, so I'm smoothing it out, but I'm not using that paddle brush, which is actually what would get me a smooth texture. I keep using the same brush for everything. That teasing comb is not going to smooth anything. It's just going to create a rough surface. So yeah, I should have been using that paddle brush I talked about before, which I don't think I've used at all during this video. I don't do it too hard, otherwise you'll pull a lot of the hair out and you won't get anywhere with it. It'll just look like a ratted nest. Like it already so does. Soft. I'm just quaffing it. I decided I want to do more of a Marilyn curl with this. This is the story I want this wig to tell. It's going to and I'm still telling that story to this day, a Maryland flip. Yeah, I've done that style a lot. <laughs> Even back then, although I have to say it's gotten a lot better now. Um, yeah, I talked about how to do a double stack in this, but I never actually showed you. So yeah, that's helpful. Very nice 1950s meets the 1960s kind of wave to the front with that curl going around it. And just using my fingers and structurizing it that way. And going in with the glue spray, that's going to add more of resistance against the hair and you want that especially when you're smoothing it out at this point because you want the hair to stay in place you want it to basically <sighs> do what you tell it to what am i doing i'm using my fingers and the combination of the i just sprayed that down with so much glue spray in the front and then i'm trying to smooth it out and like i can see visibly in my face i'm trying to make it work because i use way too much hairspray so like it's just gelling together at that point no i what you're thinking this probably the very beginning of this, you're thinking, this looks really, really, really ugly. And you know what? It has to go through an ugly phase before it gets pretty. Just like anything else. Is it ever going to get pretty, though? I take that back. Actually, looking at it, this wig was trash. Like, that Vivica A. Fox wig, like, those beauty shop wigs, you seldom ever got anything good out of them. And this was clearly not the wig to use this for. I should have actually, like, forked over the cash and bought something from Amazon because that would have gotten me a better result because those hard fronts, they have like a full rounded hairline that it, nothing's ever gonna look good. And the way the hair is like put on them, yeah, nothing will ever be pretty other than the style they like factory set into it. Not too much, but just enough to give us enough of a barrier. That way the wig will smooth out and it'll give you a really fine finished look. It's never going now to smooth out though if you keep using that like styling comb. What are you doing? Stop We're smoothing it with the teasing brush. We're all done smoothing. Here's where you spray on it. The harder it is to come back from that. I'm wearing basketball shorts. I just noticed that. I stood up and you can see where the maiden form ends and I'm wearing basketball shorts. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Why didn't I cut that? I didn't cr think to crop that frame. Oh my God. I'm surprised I kept those press on nails on that whole time. Oh, I am using the brush. Look at me. Only on the bottom though. Okay. That's gonna work. And going back in with my comb and my brush, I just smooth out those areas to make sure the waves all look nice. What am I doing? I'm using the end of the teasing comb to pick up the hair, which is just going to create a huge hole in the hair if you stick that thick thing through there. Oh, good thing it's a black wig, so it's more forgetting. Mm -hmm. Just adjusting the hair the way I want it to lay on the head. 
for this type of wig, I already know where exactly to stop. <laughs> the audio inconsistencies are my favorite because I would record them on different days because it took me like two to three days to edit these things because I had no idea what I was doing. Like I couldn't think of a way to describe what I was doing because I had no words for it. So I just threw out whatever random thing I could think of. And from listening to myself, I don't understand anything of what I'm saying. <laughs> And always remember to blend the sections back in with the hair that you didn't tease to restore. See, I posed there thinking I was done. I was not done. <laughs> I clearly like looked over at the front like, Ugh! and like started styling it again. Hopefully, hopefully like, hoping people wouldn't notice. That were set to the wig. That way the wig looks pretty and finished when you're done. This is why we edit. It's done. Now it's I done. It now. I feel just like Christina Aguilera in her dirty days when she had dark hair. This is my... <laughs> You wouldn't look anything like Christina Aguilera. You look like Christina Aguilera now. Okay, let's see. What do we gotta say? Quick and easy, dirty style. You can do it probably roughly about 35 minutes. That's how long it takes me. And that video took me almost an hour to film. It was not 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm full of shit. No, that took about 30 minutes to do and it still didn't look good. If you wanna style a wig, you have to take your time on it. It usually takes me about two hours to style a wig properly. Yeah, and this is rushed, and you can kind of tell, like, this side, there's hair sticking out all along the side of it. The front bang looks pretty, and this is look looking good, too, like, underneath the bang, but it's also because it's black hair, so I can't see any detail in it. Like, I was very smart to pick that because it was very forgiving, but there is a lot of inconsistencies in that smooth out. Do it cheaply on any old store-bought wig. Nothing I look like Teresa Judas. Why is my lace back so far? I learned something today, and don't ask me how to do this again. All right? My forehead is gigantic in that wig. Oh my God. Yeah, this is why we have lace fronts that have widow's peaks and hairlines now because this is what we had to work with. You had a full round penny of a forehead going on here. Why is my forehead so huge? I didn't think to pull that hair down. My God. And it's like my eyebrows are inside my eyelashes. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I thought I was sickening back then. I thought I was the only woman. Girl. I'm shocked there's no lipstick on my teeth. Usually that happened in these videos. All right, what's going on? Like, comment, and subscribe, okay? Love you all. Mwah. Thanks for watching. Oh, my, my old, old, old. Oh my goodness. That picture is old. And that same wig from the video only straightened out and teased up badly. What was, the, what was I advertising? My drugstore challenge and my Star Wars lipsticks. Oh my goodness. That was fun. Oh my goodness, what a walk down memory lane. I have to say, my final thoughts on this were, that video was inspired. I will say that, like I was very ambitious with what I was trying to accomplish there. And I did manage to get out at least two to four actual valid things that could be useful in hairstyling. And as far as styling the wig goes, I mean, it wasn't the worst wig tutorial on YouTube. <laughs> for what it's worth. And look how far I've come. Oh my God, you guys. Just think this is four years ago and some of you have been with me this whole time and have followed my journey despite putting out videos like that. <laughs> I will say though, like, I had that wig on my head. I was so proud of it. <laughs> and as soon as I finished editing that video, I was even more proud of myself because I edited that video by myself. So, <sighs> kudos me. Oh, and comment down below if you think I should make this video private. Or should I keep it up and make sure people keep learning the wrong things? <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye! Hey everyone, I'm the Brutally Honest Queen, and we need to talk about James Mansfield. Normally, I wouldn't waste time on somebody that's completely irrelevant, but James Mansfield is so unlikable. She made a video reflecting on her past videos, and while she was doing this gross act of self-indulgence, she forgot to read off her Venn moments. The names she should have said were, James, I know, right? She couldn't even remember somebody that has the same name as her. Patrick, Dan, Emily, Miranda, Mackenzie, Bradley, Nathan, Jeremy, Billy, and Norman. She forgot all of those names. It got that backed up. And for this, James Mansfield is so unlikable. Click here and watch my last episode of Wig Wars. Or see me transform a wig from Wish. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll have the Honest Queen make a video about how you're so unlikable. So click it.